Welcome YouTubers to another video. Before we start, please like and subscribe and share our videos so that others may be blessed. Today we're going to be talking about the the most uh, uh, manipulated word in the Bible. And uh, that word is love. Most people believe that love means like we love each other. And and the truth is is that that's that's far from the truth. Those are lies of the devil. But today we're going to show how the Bible means and and the Bible's interpretation of the word love and where it comes from. Now that word comes from an event that happened thousands of years ago. This ha this event happened over a thousand years, even before Jesus Christ walked on the earth. And that event, um, what happened in that event was that Jesus was God at the time. And he talked to Moses and told Moses, Moses, bring all the people to, to the foot of the mountain and I'm going to uh, talk to them and tell them how I want them to live. Well, during that time, uh, Moses would always, uh, and, and God would tell Moses to tell the people, to love the Lord with all thy heart, all thy might, and all thy soul, and love God, and keep his commandments. So, in that time, it was known that the way you love God was to keep his commandments. That's how you would show love to God. And, and that word comes from way back then. But, but let's, let's look at the scriptures and, and let's make sure that, that that's, that's what we're going to see. In Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5 and 6. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy might. And verse 6. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thy heart. And, and in those days, the words that, that are mentioned here are the Ten Commandments. The, back then, God's words were known to be the Ten Commandments because that's what Jesus Christ uh, was saying to the people um, from the mountain. The words were, but, but the, the Ten Commandments, but, but it's known as the Word of God. In Deuteronomy, Chapter 7, verse 9. It says, Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God and faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. You know, this is where the word mercy comes in too. Actually, mercy is part of um, the Ten Commandments. So when you see mercy, you know that that uh, grace comes in there too. So, you know, that's part of the commandments. And people think that all this comes from the from the New Testament, but, but the reality is that, that it doesn't. Everything in the New Testament is just repeated from what they, these people were supposed to learn. And actually, it, it comes from the Old Testament. <clears throat> in Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 12, I mean, yeah, verse 12 through 13, it says, And now, Israel, what do the, do what the Lord thy God has required of thee, but to fear the Lord thy God and walk in all his ways, and to love him and to sit and to serve the Lord 
thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul. People think that, that uh, Jesus Christ gave us two new commandments. And one was to lo love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy mind, and all thy soul. But the truth is that Jesus Christ had already uh, uh, came up with those words in the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, they mean that, that to serve God, to obey him, to listen to the words that God said on the mountain and live by them. And, and this is what Jesus Christ was, was um, talking to the people and teaching them in those days. He was teaching them salvation. And to, in today's world, that's what it means, today's world, too. But we are so hard-headed, you know. We are, are, are embedded in sin, and we're used to the, the, the sinful ways and that, that we see in the world today. And we don't want to change. All we want is to, to hear, oh, you're saved, you're saved, and you don't have to do anything, and you're accepted. And, and those are lies of the devil. The devil wants you to believe that because the devil wants to um, make sure that everybody, everybody is a sinner. He, he believes that, that God will not destroy everybody. But we will get into some scriptures that do show that, that God believes that the few, that he's going to be proud of the very few that keep his commandments and that will be saved. And he, he will be most proud of those people. And he doesn't want to see anybody perish, but it's not him that makes him perish. It's we that make ourselves perish because we are the ones that choose how we want to live. So, you know, we can't blame God because we perish. We, we have to blame ourselves. So we go to chapter, in Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 13. To keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes, which I command thee this day. These are, are, are part of, of the previous uh, verses that show what it means to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and all thy soul. But now we have to go and see in the New Testament, okay? Now, in the New Testament, you know, the words are going to be a little bit different. And and you can it's going to confuse people. Because when Jesus Christ says them, Jesus Christ says them like, uh, they're my commandments. Like he was the one that was on the mountain speaking, and and it confuses people, you know, because they're not they're not used to that. They're not used to hearing that on the street. But but Christ says, like, I was in the mountain. I was speaking to you, and if you love me, you keep my commandments, because and people are like, whoa, this is new to them. And, and the reason that, that they were supposed to reject Christ was because the commandment says, no other gods before me. So how can they accept Jesus Christ when Jesus Christ was out there saying to them, hey, I, I, I was God. I'm the same God. Well, you know, can they trust that? Can the Israel can you blame the Israelite people for trusting or not trusting you know in Jesus Christ? How can you accept that if if you have a commandment that tells you not to? So they had a dilemma and 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 their dilemma was to choose righteously and and the truth is is that they really did choose righteously if they kept the commandments in it because they were supposed to reject everybody that that claimed to be God. 
So John, the Gospel of John 14, 15 says, if you, and Jesus Christ was speaking at this time, if you love me, keep my commandments. John 14, 23, verse 23 and 24, if a man love me, he will keep my words, which were the commandments, and my Father will love him, and I will come unto him and make our abode with him. Which they would dwell with each other, and, 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 and that's what he was talking about. That I'm going to be in him, and he's going to be like me, and I'm going to be like him, and we'll be like each other. And But, you know, how, if the commandment says no other gods, how can you accept that? You know, so it, it was a really difficult decision that these people had to make. But but thousands of years later, we, we know better now. You know, we know better. And and the Gospel of John fourteen twenty four. It said, he that loveth me, not, very important word, not. He that loveth me, not, keepeth not my sayings, and the word which you hear is not mine, but the Father which sent me. You know, Jesus Christ says, and explains to us that you know, he sees the way people walk. And he sees that the way, when people, when I say people walk, I'm saying it's how they live. Well, if he sees that you, you're not living by the words that he spoke, then he understands and he sees that you are not one of his sheep and that you do not hear his voice. And only those people that hear his voice live by the commandments and you can see you can see how these people live and who they are in first john 2 5 but whoso keepeth his word in him verily is the love of god perfected hereby See, John says that if you're keeping God's word, then you have perfected what they call the word love. And, and it continues to explain to us what it means in the Old Testament, in Jesus Christ, in, in the letters, And in First John 2, 7, it says, I write unto you, I write a new com no new commandment unto you, but an old commandment, which ye had heard from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which ye have heard from the beginning. So Jesus Christ was telling us that this is not new. This is not new. And the word love is not new. They were expected to follow the words of God in the mountain. So the word love comes from the Old Testament and it's obedience. It's being obedient to the word, being obedient to God, being obedient of the way you live. This is what God wanted from us. When, they, when you hear the word, love thy neighbor, those were the two new commandments, claimed that, that they were new, but, but the reality was that, that those two commandments were not new. The first one, um, what that one does is that it summarizes the first four commandments of the Bible, or, or, or of the commandments. And, and the last, and love thy neighbor, it summarizes the last six commandments. So it, it's the way you treat your neighbor is, is love thy neighbor. And it's the way you treat God is the uh, 
love God with all their heart, all their might, and all their soul. So love means being obedient. And, and hopefully everybody has learned something that it's not the type of love that, that it's claimed in the church. Those are lies of the devil. But, but now you know, and now you know better, and now you know that if today, please make your choice today to follow Jesus and obey his voice and open up your ears and let those words sink into your heart because salvation comes through Jesus to follow him, to obey him, so that you may have eternal life. <clears throat> Dear Lord God, Father in heaven, I ask you, Lord, that this video, Lord, may be shared to a thousand generations. Unto them, Lord, they have never understood about learning how to read and learn about what these words mean what the Bible means, Lord, what all these wolves have taken from them and robbed them. I ask you, Lord, to please, Lord, open their hearts and open their eyes. Give them understanding, Lord, and wisdom that they may also be a blessing towards you, Lord, that they may be fruitful and multiply, but they may multiply your fruit in the words that you have given us. And that you may scatter their enemies, Lord. And that you may make them richly, abundantly, Lord, on earth. Amen. Until next time, and the next video, and the wisdom that comes with it, Shalom.